Hey, good to see everybody. You know, I'm kind of curious. It was the April Fool's weekend. Did any of you get taken by an April Fool's gag? If you did, I'd love to hear about it. Honestly, leave me a comment below. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the first Monday of April. It is April 3rd. Now, we like to talk about hot OTC and penny stocks on this show. And today, I've got one particular stock I want to focus in on. This is ticker DFLI, Dragonfly Energy Holdings. Now, to be quite honest, this company has caught my attention twice in the last week. First, on Wednesday, she had a beautiful chart. She had that atypical breakout chart, right? That 200-day SMA coming down. The price is either right under it or right on top of it. Looking sweet and dreamy. Came over here and I did find a catalyst. Financials. So it did look good. So why didn't I share it with you? Well, I only share three stocks with you each day. And that was on my short list of about nine or ten. So I had to narrow it down and it got bumped. Sorry. But. I took a second look at it over the weekend and things have changed. The catalyst is still good and the opportunity's gotten better. So I like DFLI for a short play. I think we can get some good gains out of this in a hurry, but I really do like this for a long hold. When you see everything they're involved in, you're going to see they're in the right lane pointing towards the future. Now the first thing I definitely have to let you know is this is the new kid on the block. Dragonfly hasn't been on the market very long. She just came on October of last year. She did a business combination with Chardon Next Tech Acquisition Corp. Now, she's been in business since 2012, but she just got on the market about six months ago. So, DFLI, she finished the day at $2.98 with just a little over a half percent loss. And in case you didn't notice, she is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. So, what is this company all about? Yeah, they are involved with green energy, but the first thing I want to share with you isn't about what they do, but who they are, specifically Dr. Dennis Ferris. Dr. Dennis Ferris has got his accomplishments, he's got his credentials, but what I'm most impressed with isn't the fact that he's the president and the chief executive officer, but that he is the founder. Folks, this is really important, and I'll tell you why. Think of it as a parent and a child relationship. This is the founder who brought the dream to the table, who has given it life, who got it onto the market and is watching it grow. Who else do you want driving the car with your kids in the car? You, right? You're going to take best care of them. And that's what I see going on here. You could not have a better man at the wheel. Now I'm ready to share with you what this company does. Well, let's initially start by looking at a news press and getting their description there. They tell us that Dragonfly Energy Holdings Corp is headquartered in Reno, Nevada, is a leading supplier of deep cycle lithium ion batteries. Dragonfly's research and development initiatives are revolutionizing the energy storage industry through innovative technologies and manufacturing processes. Today, Dragonfly's non-toxic deep cycle lithium ion batteries are displacing lead acid batteries, the type we all have in our cars, across a wide range of end markets, including RVs, marine vessels, off-grid installations, and other storage applications. Dragonfly is also focused on delivering an energy storage solution to enable a more sustainable and reliable smart grid through future deployment of the company's proprietary and patented solid-state cell technology. Now we're going to get deeper into it by just going to the source of information, their website. This is their website, real easy name to remember, dragonflyenergy.com. And it's quite informative. They've got lots of information and videos here. So if you're really interested in the company, this is probably the best place to be doing your DD at their website. Now we're going to touch on to some aspects of this company that sets them apart from their competitors. The first thing you need to know is they're just not into batteries. Actually, they are focusing more on energy storage because most companies aren't. Now, they are really working on becoming vertically integrated. This means that they want to run every aspect of their business from beginning to end, from mining, getting the lithium out of the ground, to actually getting the products out there, and everything in between. And they want to do this all within the state of Nevada. They don't want to have to source anything outside of the state. This is going to make it quick, simple, and cost efficient for them. 
Now, the first thing I want to do, and I know it's a little bit dry, but I want to inform you of how lithium ion batteries are made because this is what used to be done and this company's doing something different, which sets them apart. Conventional lithium ion cell production is very messy and expensive. Nasty solvents are required for dissolving the polymer binder during the electrode coating. These solvents must be removed and reclaimed prior to cell assembly using power hungry ovens and vacuum systems. It's time consuming and ultimately drives up the cost of the energy storage. Now, the problem is, as I said, most companies are working on creating these fast charging batteries, but they're not working on storage batteries. So this is a nice opened up market for this company. Now they tell us here that the more EVs that are brought onto the market and charged daily from the grid, combined with the increased technology in today's culture, the more increased power demands begin to stress an already antiquated power grid. You know this is gonna be the truth. Most cities have one electric company that supplies all the electricity to all the businesses and homes. Can it handle all the cars as well? So that's what they want to do. They want to create storage systems in people's homes, in businesses, and they will all be connected to that power source in the city. And when needed, they can all be tapped into so that nobody goes without. Their primary battery they're working on right now is called the Life PO4. It has already been proven to be the perfect battery chemistry when looking at the storage purpose. It has a long lifespan, 3,000 cycles, and their focus right now is not the cell chemistry, but rather the manufacturing process. They've developed a dry, solvent-free process whereby electrodes are rapidly grown one particle at a time. We can produce conventional cathodes and anodes with no solvents, no ovens, and no vacuum. So it's quick, it's simple, and it's clean. And this is going to help them in the long run. What this means is a significantly reduced manufacturing footprint, a smaller establishment, allowing for a rapid scaling of production at reduced cost all done here in the United States. This positions Dragonfly Energy uniquely in the industry. Once cell production begins, we'll control the entire process from design, manufacturing and assembling of battery products to integration of full power systems backed with the exemplary technical support and services our customers have come to expect. Now, they are working on a special battery. Lots of companies are working on it right now, but they just got a patent for their technology that they're working on. Everybody is trying to create a solid state electric battery. Now, let me see the best example. Do you remember our old hard drives? You could hear them whizzing. Bzzz, you could feel it vibrating because it was spinning so fast inside. Well, now we have solid state hard drives. Listen to one. You don't hear anything. Do you feel a vibration? No, because there's no moving parts. That's what solid state means. They're cleaner, they're more efficient, they're lightweight, they're just better all the way around. These proprietary solid state battery cells contain a solid electrolyte instead of a liquid electrolyte, thus removing the flammability of the technology. Combined with our patented manufacturing process, these cells still maintain the high performance and longevity of Life PO4 battery chemistry is known for. We have validated our non-flammable solid state technology and are currently optimizing the cells for preparation for production. Now, as I said, they are primarily focused on storage. Lots of people are making batteries. They're making batteries too, but they're making batteries that can store power. A centralized grid system is what we've most commonly seen in our country for electric power management, right? We've got one power company for each city. I don't know of a whole lot of cities that have more than one. Whereas distributed storage is a power solution that stores the energy generated for use at a later time. When connected to the electric utility's lower voltage distribution lines, distributed generation can help support delivery of clean, reliable power to additional customers. Smart grids and microgrids allow energy generation and storage from buildings and houses all over the country, harnessing renewable energy and feeding it between the consumer and the grid as demands require. 
And since these unique manufacturing processes, we've developed and able us to create a battery that is safe with 100% non-flammability and long lasting with a projected 5,000 cycles of life. This opens up the door to widespread distributed storage deployment as a tool to help reduce stress to the country's power grid. And you know it's gonna happen. I mean, California, they would have gray outs in the middle of the summer when it was 115 degrees out. Everybody was running their air conditioner in the middle of the day, full blast. Well, the electric company just couldn't handle it and power would go off. For four to six hours, we'd have no power. Well, with this situation, you would not have to go without power. We believe that we have found a way to drop the price of energy storage globally. While this is one step in the right direction, we imagine a future where Dragonfly smart storage solutions will allow for less reliance on the power grid with ample access to backup power by distributing energy. Now they've got more information here I want to share with you. Let's take a look at some of those batteries. So they've got a lot of batteries here and they tell us they make them in 12 volt, 24 volt and 48 volt systems. This is to replace those lead acid batteries that we've been using. Lead is dead. They call their batteries battle born batteries. That is the line of their life po 4 batteries. And they come in a lot of varieties. It looks familiar, don't it? like the kind you got in your car, right? Right, they've got them for cars, they've got them for boats, they've got them for RVs. They tell us up here that they're working in a lot of different industries. The RVs, you're definitely gonna need energy storage in an RV. You never know where you're gonna be, but chances are it's gonna be a long ways from a plug-in. They've got them for boats, absolutely gonna need them on a boat. There's no plug-ins out in the middle of the water. And you darn sure don't want your batteries blowing up and catching fire when you're out in the middle of the woods, the desert, or the ocean. They also have them attached to work trucks as well as industrial equipment. So if you're going out into the middle of the woods and you're working on a house, but you've got no power, you don't have to bring a generator and keep pouring gas into it. You can actually use these batteries. Whatever you can power with electricity, you can power with these batteries. And they have the off-grid and backup power, which is really what they're into, isn't it? They're not just putting batteries in vehicles, they're creating these power systems for businesses and homes so that they never have to do without power. Not just them, but their community as a whole. So selling products is just opening the door. You need to sell the product so that you can set up the microgrid. Then you've got an entire system set up that you're working with. And that's what they're working towards. Not just selling the products, but creating this huge microgrid that they can oversee. They tell us that in addition to those eight core products, Dragonfly offers bundled solutions for its key markets, the recreational vehicles, marine vessels, off-grid solar installations, as well as charging components and a variety of accessories that simplify the installation process and ensure performance and reliability. This wide range of products allows Dragonfly to assist their customers with system design and installation processes, which can result in deeper relationships with their customers as system requirements change. Management estimates that the transition to becoming a systems integrator is a natural path for the company as the lithium ion supply chain evolves. The more of these storage units they sell and put out there, the more are on the microgrid. And as I said, they're already putting it together. They're already connecting it. They're going to be overseeing it. And this can bring in a lot of extra revenues. Now, we were talking about the company going vertical. They want to do everything from start to finish there in Nevada. And I literally said they wanted to get the lithium out of the ground. Well, I wasn't kidding about that. It was back in 2020 that they made a deal. This is way back before they were ever on the market, right? So they tell us here that Dragonfly Energy and Ioneer USA Corporation, which is a subsidiary of the Australian-based Ioneer, which owns the Rhyolite Ridge Lithium Boron Project located in Nevada. They have recently entered into a memorandum of understanding. This memorandum of understanding outlines how the companies plan to work together to strengthen the domestic battery supply chain from critical materials to next generation lithium technologies. This was back when we were in the midst of COVID. So they were getting in action back then before they were even on the market. 
Dragonfly Energy is pleased to collaborate with a company like Ioneer, which is developing innovative technology that will allow for a vertically integrated energy supply chain in America, and more specifically, in the great state of Nevada. According to Ioneer, the company aims to commence production in 2023. Here we are. So things are just about ready to get going. They've come onto the market. This deal's been in place. They're in Nevada. They've got their patents going in right now. I'm liking what I see. Now, Ioneer isn't the only deal they've made. Oh no, they've got a hot deal with Thor Industries. And I gotta be honest, folks, I'm excited about this one. I think this one is under the radar. People are talking about it, but they're not making a big deal. And when you see the size of Thor, you'll understand why I'm excited. Dragonfly's recreational vehicle relationship with Thor Industries is groundbreaking. Thor, together with its subsidiaries, they've got 53 subsidiaries is the world's largest manufacturer of recreational vehicles and they claim to have 40 to 50 percent of the global market share wow to date dragonfly has a relationship with three of the 17 thor brands keystone tiffin and airstream and back in july of last year two things happened to solidify this deal between them one thor invested 15 million dollars into this company I think they're very pleased with the way things are going. And two, Dragonfly agreed to a mutually agreed distribution arrangement and joint IP, this is intellectual property development arrangement with Thor. They're getting tight folks. And I think they're gonna revolutionize the recreational vehicle market. That's just my opinion. Now there is a piece of news that just came out here about Keystone. This is one of the organizations they're working with with Thor. They tell us here that Dragonfly Energy today announced a further strengthening of its established business relationship with Keystone RV, the largest towable RV manufacturer in the United States. Customers can now expect to have Dragonfly Energy lithium-ion batteries included on all Keystone units shipped through the end of 2022. Now, considering this news came out in 2022, I don't think they were projecting too far. So I'm thinking it's probably still going on. But some DT will fill us in on that detail. This arrangement strengthens Keystone's previously announced exclusive agreement to provide Dragonfly Energy batteries as standard or optional OEM equipment on all Keystone RV travel trailers and fifth wheels. Now, the CEO of Thor, he says this strategic partnership with Dragonfly Energy shows our commitment to setting the standard in our industry for providing top energy storage solutions for all of our customers. And finally, this is booming, folks. Check this out. Dragonfly's products are outperforming replacements for traditional lead acid batteries with a 10 times longer lifespan, three times the power, five times the energy density, and five times the charging speed. Woohoo! Lithium batteries, they got it all over those lead batteries and obviously the replacement batteries as well. But they're not perfect yet, right? They can still explode and burn, which is why it's really important that we get these solid state technology batteries out there. And to that point, Dragonfly is developing solid state batteries and expects to launch a pilot line in 2023. Everything's happening now. The mining, the uh, solid state batteries, they're up on the market. Now's a good time to be considering this company. Unlike other manufacturers focused on the EV market, which require batteries with high energy density and fast charging time, Dragonfly is focused on energy storage, which is a completely different set of priorities. Energy storage is less focused on charging time and energy density, but more on low cost and long life cycle. Not to mention safety. We don't want these things burning anymore. And they are on the cusp of getting that done. Lots of people are working on it. It is a race. And I hope they win. They're in the runnings. The very last thing I want to talk about before we go look at some other information to share structure and the financials is they have a target price right now of $15. Now, this is coming from 
Canned core genuity, I believe it is, $15. But we've got other ones out there for $12, another one for $15. These go all the way back to November to present time. So it's not like the low price is low because it's not worth anything. No, it's just under the radar. All right, let's go take a look at the share structure, the financials, and everything else. As I always do, we're coming back to the OTC markets to get all this information. We're going to take a look at the relative volume for DFLI first. Normally, she's doing 180,000 shares a day. Today, she fell 50,000 shares down to 130,000. Now, the last couple of days have been really strong on volume but it was negative volume. It was selling. There was a problem with the financials that I'm going to explain to you here in just a minute. But right now, everything is calming down. The volume is dropping and everything is, well, call it the calm after the storm. Looks like it's about ready to recover and start coming back up. Share structure for Dragonfly. Well, this was actually surprising. We have an outstanding share count of 43.2 million. I was not expecting what I found. Jumping over to Google, which is the only place I could get the float, look what I discovered. 5.93 million. We're talking 6 million float. And the very next one matches it exactly. Now, I did find one other number here, 9.3 million. And that's it. Now, I am willing to believe it is 5.93 because these two exactly match from two different sites, Wall Street Journal and Market Watch. It could be 9.3 though. In either case, we have a very healthy low float. Looking at the financials for Dragonfly. At the end of 2022, they show us they did $86 million. Now, we know it's millions because we've got three zeros up here. You got to put behind any of the numbers on this chart. Now, the great thing here is we got a bit of a peekaboo. The company's only been here since October, but they're showing us all of 2022's revenues. When you jump over here to the quarterly, that's all you get is one quarter. They don't show us the previous quarters. They show us the very last one at 20 million. So we know that they made 86 million in 2022 and the very first quarter on the market, they did 20 million. And that's all we really know. And we were supposed to get financials Thursday. I was looking at it Wednesday. The financials were supposed to come out Thursday and they didn't. They did not come out and nobody knew why and the stock started to fall. So over here in the disclosures, they put out two filings, one on the 31st and one on the 3rd of April. This is the NT10K. Now you're familiar with what a 10K is. That is an annual financial report. A 10Q is a quarterly financial report. Well, whenever you see the NT in front of it, you can think of that as a abbreviation for the word not. We are not filing our 10K on time. And they put another one here a couple of days later, which is surprising. I'm going to show you why. When you jump into these, they tell you here the registrant is unable to file their Form 10K for the year 2022. The registrant anticipates that it will file the Form 10K within the 15-day grace period provided by this rule. So by filing that, they bought themselves 15 days. No problem. That happens a lot. On the quarterlies, you only buy yourself five days. Well, you saw that they filed another one right here on the third. Looking at that one, they tell us that they aren't going to be able to make it. They say the company is continuing to assess the accounting treatment related to the business combination completed during the fourth quarter. What they're saying is the auditor is having problems. You've got two companies here that have merged and this is their first yearly audit and quarterly audit where both companies' numbers have to come together and collaborate and they've got to figure it all out. And they say they just need more time. Does that sound like a problem? I mean, yeah, they're late, but they're not going to get kicked off of the NASDAQ or anything. So they are buying themselves some more time. It looks like they're going to be a little bit late. People are upset about that, but it's not a problem. We all have these situations come. How many people are going to be late filing their taxes? And nobody wants to be late. Stuff happens, right? So that's what's going on here. And I think they're going to recover. As soon as that comes out, I know the stock is going to come up. At least that's my impression. I don't know anything for fact. All right, let's go take a look at that news now. 
So they really don't have a whole lot of news here. I mean, they did have a lot of news. We were looking at news from 2020 and 2021, but since they've been on the market, not a whole lot of news, but there is some here. We've got one that came out in January. Dragonfly Energy launches smart lithium ion battery technology, Dragonfly Intelligence. Simply put, it is a mobile app on your phone that is connected to your batteries and talks to you, lets you know everything about your batteries, you know, how much charge they've got, what temperature they've got, and whatever else information you need. Now you can talk to your batteries wherever you're at and know what's going on. Then in February, they had another one. Uh, this is the American Boat and Yacht Council. They are now compliant with their lithium power systems, all made possible with the new products from Battleborn Batteries. And then we've got a lot of information about their quarterly reports and your annual reports. But nothing for the one we need now and that's what's going on folks we need that that financial to come out and we're going to get a run here in this short game but i still believe this is a perfect stock for the long haul they've got so much going on the grids are going to be built folks and this is something new we're all working on the electric company's power some people had solar power but now i think it's going to become very common for people to have backup battery power that will be connected to the grid so that thousands of us will be on that grid and somebody's got to take care of it. Who? The people selling the batteries, setting it up, putting them on the grid. So I think that DFLI isn't just good for a short play, it is good for a long play. Let's go take a look at that chart now. We're taking a look at Dragonfly Energy, ticker DFLI. <laughs> and we're going to be doing this on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You can get this from TD Ameritrade. So we are looking at a six-month, four-hour view for the company. Now, actually, this is a full chart for the company from the very first day they got their ticker, October 10th. Now, SPACs come onto the market at $10. That's where her price started. And she jumped from that $10 all the way up to $18.34 and aftermarket she hit $23.74 and then abruptly she fell down here to about $7.50 where she sat for a couple of months and then out of nowhere she takes this 400% jump to $28.75. Now I say out of nowhere because I couldn't find the reason. This was December 2nd she decided to run. Now maybe I missed something but whatever it was it was hot. But then she she fell very quickly and she crashed. She fell all the way down here to her all-time low of $2.54. That was yesterday. Now, we were going to look at this on Wednesday, the 29th, right there. She was looking good to me. She came up over top of that 50-day SMA, sat up there without any drive to go down, and then started to push up just in anticipation of that financial coming out but it didn't happen. And boom, she fell down to that low and right now she is calming down. And everything is pushed down right now. She is flat, she's had a hard couple of days. Looking at that one hour, 20 day view. All right, so this one looks a lot better, doesn't it? You can see how flat she was. Fell down to what was the low at that time. This low just came into the picture yesterday, but this was a low bubble, an all-time low. She bounced off of that low bubble with fervor, came up over that 50, up over the 200, and hit a $5 high, came back down, bounced off her 200, and then shot up. This is where we looked at it. I thought for sure she was going to climb. Why wouldn't she? This was a test, a bounce, and a run. But the news came out, and nobody could foresee that. Everybody was disappointed. The filings came out, and right now she is trying to get up over that 20-day SMA. We can see our PPO, my percentage price oscillator, a lot like the MACD. You read them the same. We need that blue line on top of the pink, and it's trying to get there right now. We've already had our crossover on our MACD. Our RSI has been beat up. It was on the floor down here at 30. It is now up at 46. Our technicals are starting to warm up. It was pretty chilly there for a while. Looking at the five day, five minute. All right, so this is when we were gonna look at her. She fell after that, came underneath her 200, hit that all time low, and has just been biding time. 
that's the way I'm going to put it. See, she's going straight across the board. Didn't have enough strength to jump up to that 200. Just couldn't do it. She's been beat down. So she's just hanging on tooth and nail until the 200 comes close to her. And then she makes the attempt to try to get to her savior. So I think this is ready to come around right now, folks. I think as soon as this financial comes out, and we don't know when that's going to be, so this could be a good opportunity to get in before she gets on top of that 200 at least a starter position get maybe 25 percent if you want now and when she starts to climb get the rest but i think even after the financial comes out this thing is going to start to get on a nice incline and grow of course she's going to bounce but i think through the years these micro grids are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and they're going to be right at the center of it so that is everything that I want to share with you, but I know there's more, and I'm hoping you're going to do more DD too. I like DFLI for the short play and the long hold. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.